Welcome to Maryland Medicine Frontline News. Coming up, how convalescent plasma therapy is being evaluated as a possible treatment for COVID-19. And Dean Reese discusses how the COVID-19 crisis has sparked innovation in research and patient care. One example is the accelerated use of telemedicine technology, which is being used to improve patient care, protect healthcare workers from infection, and conserve personal protective equipment. We've launched a whole series of different telehealth and telemedicine endeavors, uh, everything ranging from teletriage, so remote evaluations of patients coming into the emergency department. There's been deployment of hardware assets in patient rooms in order to reduce the number of times that healthcare providers have to go in and out of the rooms and thereby uh, reduce their exposure. Uh, there has been uh, similar infrastructure created so that we can provide virtual consults throughout the medical system. The connectivity is already there. It's been built out. There's the hardware and the software uh, assets that are needed to do the remote evaluation. And then in a centralized location, we have emergency medicine physicians, as is the case in this example, that are ready to do these virtual evaluations to emergency departments throughout the medical system. The telehealth team is uh, not letting up. We are keeping our foot on the accelerator because we recognize that while we have a robust uh, telehealth infrastructure in existence today, we also realize that there are additional opportunities and directions that we can go such that as this virus plays out, we will have increasing applications to help our uh, clinical personnel and really all employees deal with COVID-19. Telemedicine systems are being developed quickly across all clinical departments. My senior administrative staff were just amazing at helping me understand the logistics of how to get this platform up and running, how to code, how to bill. But I think you have to be responsive to sort of environmental uh, events and realize that the driving factor here is taking care of patients. What I'm interested in is making sure we have a touch with our patients, we maintain continuity of care. And I have to tell you, Larry, to, to a person, uh, patients have been hugely grateful that we have established this platform. Many folks are home, they're alone, they're, they're frightened. Not only do they have a neurologic problem, but now they're dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. And just having your physician kind of show up and say, hey, how are you doing? I'm here to check in on you. I think goes miles for us in terms of thinking you know, forward about what our engagement with the people of the city of Baltimore, with the state of Maryland. Um, so I think it's really thinking ahead, being ready to move quickly and the ability to be decisive in decision-making. I mean, it, basically in mid-March, I just said, we're going for telemedicine and we, we just went for it. From telemedicine to expanding testing capabilities using robotics, the COVID crisis has sparked innovation on many levels. Telemedicine is one area that, as unfortunate as this crisis has been, has actually catalyzed our abilities to use uh, electronic means of maintaining patient care. Doctors want to remain in touch with their patients. Patients want to remain in contact with their doctors. So telemedicine has just exploded, an exponential growth in telemedicine in virtually all the specialties. And that has been extraordinarily positive so that patient care can continue uninterrupted in this manner. There are other examples that I'm aware of where faculty members have really looked at the patient, the sick patient, and identified potential opportunities for them to innovate using repurposing of drugs to see whether these drugs can become therapeutics for patients with COVID-19, especially those with severe complications. There's also the idea of using stem cells to avert or to mitigate the cytokine storm that we see associated with, stem, with uh, very sick COVID-19 patients. The University of Maryland has joined a national multi-center evaluation of convalescent plasma as a possible treatment for patients with severe COVID-19. In this therapy, the COVID patient is transfused with the plasma of a donor who has recovered from the virus. What the aim of the study is, is to evaluate whether patients who have recovered from COVID-19, who presumably have antibodies that can fight off the virus, 
uh, whether those antibodies can be effective in managing patients who have very serious and life-threatening uh, COVID disease. The passive antibody therapy is an immune therapy. It's different than a vaccine because it basically allows the patient to receive the antibody instead of uh, taking time for the patient to make the antibody. So that's the hope is that we give at least partial protection. It may not be full protection, but it is going to be another tool in our toolbox to help out with combating COVID-19. We think that it's going to be relatively safe. Um, and again, what we want to know is how efficacious it will be. You can stay up to date by visiting the coronavirus update page on the School of Medicine website. Until next week, I'm Larry Roberts for the University of Maryland School of Medicine.